In the decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. Billie Jean. Just hold it. Good boy, Ken. Sheriff, don't get back till morning. Now, you come with me. Let's string him up now. Yeah. No, what are we going to do? Let's string him up now, I say. Billie Jean. 
She was 19 years old. I couldn't see it was a girl. She was the most decent thing ever come out of this town. That's what she was. She'd come riding down the street on her pinto and she'd make us all light up with happiness. And you killed her. Your dirty, ugly boot stepped on a flower, took away its life, ground it into the dirt. Now get out of here. Take your murdering, bounty hunting self and get out of my place. What's the matter with you? You had your head coming in here? You said she was 19 years old. We stay around any longer, we gonna follow. Both of us. Now you listen to me, Corey. We gonna ride far and we gonna ride fast. And believe me when I tell you, they ain't far from a rope out there. I know Lynch Fever. I know it. They try to stop us, huh? Not now. Not if we move now. Try to pick up Blake's trail. There's a town about a half day's ride from a good a place any to start. Second look. There's a lot of strange things to me, Mr. Corey. <laughs> Somebody you know? No. Might as well get started then. Howdy. Buy a drink? Maybe. Well, I keep. Well, you have. You live around here? More or less. We're looking for a friend of ours. He was supposed to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to meet him here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know of any strangers come in? Town's made up of strangers. Well, this man's name is Tracy. Tracy Blake. Never heard of him. Thanks for the drink. What's wrong? Nothing. Look, there's a lot of blondes in the world. Your jaw gonna go slack every time you see one. <laughs> well, what happened this morning was an accident. It wasn't your fault. I don't know what you're talking about. You show. Just leave me alone. I'm gonna be all right. You the one's got to know that. I'm going outside and poke around. See if I can find somebody ain't got locked, Joe. Thank you. Hey, uh, you're uh head Corey, ain't you? Hello, Corey. Yeah, well, that's uh, what I figured when I saw you two ride in together. Ain't nobody else I know of that hook up with a... I don't know you, friend. And you don't know me or my partner. Let's just keep it that way, huh? Hey, hey, you hear that? 
this bounty hunter scum said? Like I ain't fit to talk to him. That's right, boys, a bounty hunter. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Hey, back shooter. Let's see your reputation in action. How good are you at facing up? Eye to eye. Now, uh, what do I have to do, Corey, to make you draw? Spit in your face? You're biting off a big mouthful, little man. Got to be alive to enjoy your reputation. You tell your black shadow to wait in line. I'll take you first. On the count of three, Corey. One. Two. Three. What are you waiting for? Curry. Hey, you see that? You see him? He wouldn't draw. Victor on me. I knew he was yellow as soon as I saw him. Come on, the tricks are on me. I think I did. Cost me near a bottle of whiskey. But I heard about a cabin south of town a ways. Man, could have been Blake holed up there a month or so last summer. What you doing here? Just what you see. Kind of surprised me back there. You made a big man out of him, Corey. Just wasn't worth it. Risk taking a bullet. Just acquired a loudmouth. Yeah. I guess he could have gotten off a lucky shot. Yeah, just didn't make sense. Ah, uh, Corey, you could have uh, emptied your gun before you cleared leather and reloaded before you hit the flow. Now, that's something we both know. Do you always draw on everybody that bad mouths you? No, but I never back off once I start something. And neither do you, not that I know of. I didn't back off. I just saw it for what it was, a lot of damn nonsense, that's all. Just seemed funny. How funny? Like? Like what? Like you wanted to draw, but you couldn't. That's ridiculous. That's just what it looked like. Look, will you do me a favor and chew over something else for a while? Now, it's my name and my choice. Now, are we going after Blake or not? I just said it might be him. We're not going to find out just standing here jawing about it. Got Blake's build. Can't tell from this distance. That's as much Tracy Blake as he'll ever be. But you want to go up there and ask his name. The last two men did that was Marshall's, and they both dead for it. He's gone inside. Before his gear, likely. 
Might as well get it over with. I'd like to take him alive. But remember, that poster reads either way. I read that poster just like you did. You all right? What kind of a fool question is that? Of course I'm all right. Let's move in. You're sweating. It's hot. I'm gonna move towards the side of the house. You cover me. If you can talk before I get there, I'd feel foolish. <laughs> Did your gun jam? Did you fall? What? I don't know. There was this flower. And you stepped on it. What? You talking to me about flowers? You telling me about flowers? I almost got cut in two out there. Flowers, Corey. Damn them flowers and you along with them. Look, we got to talk. I mean, we really got to talk. We'll talk later. No, no, it got to be now. You listen to me, Corey. There might not be no late of ours. I don't know what happened. I had Blake in my sights, and then... then I saw his face. Sam Bellin. Who? Sam Bellin, I saw his face. Who's this man almost got me killed? You see? That's just it. You don't even remember him, do you? He was a bounty we took down by the border. Big, heavy set fella. All right, I remember what about him. Well, later, we found out his wife was pregnant. I don't want to hear it. We took him in dead. He had a shotgun on us. Why don't you remember that instead of his widow? It was us that made her a widow. All those faceless people, all those people without names. Outlaws. Killers, wanted men. How many? How many widows? How many fatherless children? I don't want to know about them. I don't want to hear nothing about what they was before the bounty posters went up on them. Guilty or innocent, we can't decide that. We ain't judge, we ain't Joe, we sure and hell ain't God. Oh, yes, we are. When we pull that trigger, we are God. Something bad wrong with you, Corey. Some spell come over you today. No. Oh. That's what fell in your gut. That's what's making you break out in a sweat. That was an accident. You know it. You keep saying that. Why don't you believe it? You believe the gun she tried to use on you? What gun? Her gun. She had a gun. I don't remember any gun. Well, I do. I got no problem about that, Mr. Corey. You're my problem, pure and simple. Could have been my grave out there because of you. You're supposed to cover me. Without you, I go against him different. All right, why don't you say it straight out and plain? What's on your mind? I think you know already. You want me to say it, I will. When we hooked up together, didn't matter what was between us, good or bad. The one thing we could count on when all hell broke loose, we each did our job. All right. 
You needed me and I wasn't there. But don't you start acting morally superior to me, you hear? This is my problem and I'm gonna work it out my own way. Well, if you've got trouble with your gun hand, Corey, it's my problem too. Any feelings we got between us don't matter. You was my closest brother, it'd be the same thing. Dead weight is dead weight. The calling we's in, the heaviest thing is staying alive. The quickest way I know to the graveyard is dead weight. Calling. How many times have I heard you say that and wanted to a wretch? This isn't even a business, much less a calling. Bounty hunter. You in it the same as me? Yes, I'm in it. But I sure as hell am not proud of it. I remember that much of my background. And I remember mine. And if I'm proud of where I am, it's because I remember where I was a few years ago and who I was. They don't want me in their town because I hunt bounty. That's fine with me. But when I leave, it's on my own horse with my own saddle and blanket under me, my wrists and my ankles free. They ask me to leave. Sometime I'm told. Sometime I'm asked. Cursed even. Mean with fire. And you've had your share of that. But all of it's a long way from being sent out of auction block. I'm a bounty hunter. Pick up it what you want. Call in a dirty job. But up to now, Corey, you ain't showed me you any different. With all your learning, and your manners, and your once upon a time 100 slave plantation. But if you think you're too quality for it, now's the time to see it. Before you ride another mile. I'm not about to turn tail and run just because you're wound up and say so. So let's stay and fight it out. We're going after Blake again. Only this time I do it alone. Till you show. Till you get rid of what's crippling you. And what about after Blake if it's still with me? Can't be that deep. I don't know. Well, I know if word gets around that I lost my nerve. I'll be a target for every gun in the territory. You'll be hiring on as my bodyguard. Is that what you think? That you lost your nerve? No. No, it's the girl. I know it. I just can't get that kid out of my mind. Jamal, she was 19 years old. And she was loved. She was gold hair. She was pretty as a flower. Yeah. But if she was fat, 40, an ugly and dirty mouth drunk, would she still fill your head? I hope so. I... Dear God, I hope that. It don't pleasure me to see you feeling this bad, Corey. But if you put yourself down on my ground for a bit, you might ask yourself, what was she doing up there in the first place, armed, with a man done killed three times, on the run with a price on his head? You know, I have to go back. I don't know where it's going to lead, but I have to go back to that town. I have to go after Blake. Ain't nothing else I can do. Right, you go after Blake. Maybe you better get yourself somebody else to ride with. If there's a need, I will. Yeah. You be careful about Blake, you hear? He's going to be looking for you now. I'll be in Waco. I'm on five weeks from now, I'll be in Waco. I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'll look for you. Waco. You take care of yourself. You hear? Brand new funerary power. 
they, they both were Billy Jean. Poor, pretty little thing. Dead as Stone Mountain. Poor Billy Jean. Old man, which place is the mother in? But she. Say, I, I seen you someplace, but I can't remember where. Say, you, you're you a friend of the grieving mother, ain't you? Why ain't you comforting her? Why? Oh, sorrow and Jesus. Listen how they singing for Billy Jean. Oh, I'm grieving too in, in, in my own special way. I... I'd gladly comfort the mother if I knew where to go. Well, the funeral parlor, Second Street. <laughs> say, say, buy me a drink for Billy Jean. Buy me a drink for poor cold Billy Jean. Oh, I'm, I'm just a grieving soul for poor cold Billy Jean. Billy Jean, I know you can hear me. Your earthly form lies here. But even if it were a thousand miles away, wouldn't be any closer, any dearer, any more alive. The Lord God, Jehovah, who we've been taught, is infallible. Who we've been taught cannot make a mistake. Who we know is perfect. Who we've been... Frank, Frank. I, uh, I know you. You all share, and I know you understand how deep the Reverend Watson feels to say goodbye to someone like my Billy Jean. Well, I just don't seem it can be done. I was brought up religious, like I reckon you all were. Only right now, my religion's a long ways from here. What I mean is, I just don't want to talk to God. Not now, anyway. Maybe not for quite a while. Because there's too many questions inside me I'd want him to answer. And I just couldn't stand him not being answered. We all loved Billie Jean. We still do. My Janie still talks about her. The thing she did for you. I remember everything you told us. She was a little wild, but... For any youngster, boy or girl, don't need to kick up their heels to start life. She ain't gone. No, sir. Not so long as we can remember. Yes, remember. All of us remember. Billie Jean was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Oh, don't I know that. Don't I know that for living true. Tell us, Cora. Why, Mrs. Andrews, you remember how many times I told you she just made me sit there and do nothing? Mama, she said, ain't nobody deserves more than you. Now, you just sit, Mama, and you let Billie Jean do all the chores. And she'd do them. So full of goodness and love, it'd make me cry out of thankfulness to know that she was my daughter, my flesh, my blood. My flesh and my blood formed deep inside of me. I carried a part of me for nine growing months. And every day a wonder to me for 19 years. My child was a miracle to me. 
Same as life's a miracle. And you ended it. Why'd you have to come back? Can't we even sorrow a bit before we start on heat? Why'd you come back? It ain't time for another nightmare. No. We ain't over the last one you brought. You did it. All You're right, the one that did it. Everybody take it easy. Let's go outside. Why did you come back? I want to talk to her. You got nothing to say that she'd want to hear. Maybe she's got something I want to hear. Corey, I wired the marshal at Rock and River after I poked into this thing and got to know what happened. He told me all about you. Now, bounty hunter or not, you've got a reputation that I can't quarrel with. You say the shooting was an accident, I'll take your word on it. But you made a mistake coming back here. You see, I can't be everywhere all the time. And there's all kinds of people around here believing all kinds of things. And some of them don't hold too well with the slow workings of the law. I gotta see, uh... I don't expect anybody to understand that. And I'm not fool enough to look for friends in this town. I mean no harm, ma'am. I just want to talk to you. Would you mind closing the door? Oh, would you feel better if I put my gun belt outside? Don't matter to me. Ma'am, I wanted to talk to you because I felt the need to explain to you how it happened. It's your need you feel. No one else's. I killed your daughter. You want some coffee? No, thank you. Just my being here is enough of an imposition on you. My, you're very polite. One don't expect that from... From what? From somebody dressed trail rough like you. What part of the country are you from? Your speech has a soft sound to it. What's the matter with you? The matter? I don't understand you. Here I am wearing the same gun I killed your daughter with. Standing in the same room she must have played in as a child. You start asking me if I want coffee and where I'm from. Don't you even care how it happened? You didn't come here for that. Want me to tell you the real reason you come back? What's the real reason? You'd like for me to scream. For me to cry. Come flying at you claw and scratch at you. You want me to curse at you and spit hate in your face. Well, I won't do any of those things. Because I heard it said my daughter's killing was an accident. I didn't come here for any of that. Then you come for the other thing. To bow your head. And hear me say, Mr. Gunman, I forgive you. I forgive you for taking away the only light I ever had. Well, I'll never do that. So if I won't curse at you, and I can't forgive you, seems no need for you to stay. You're a strong woman. 
little stronger than you. That's what you mean. I'd like to know more about Billie Jean. Mr. Gunman, there is no more. Would you just tell me one thing? Well? My partner and I were hunting a wanted killer. He was up in those rocks shooting at us. Now, I've heard that your daughter had a gun. My Billy Jean hated guns. Then what was she doing there? She must have heard the shooting. She came up behind me. What was she doing? She went up there to meet her brother. There was no one else there but she and Tracy Blake, the man we were hunting. Tracy Blake is my son. But I thought you knew that. Billy Jean and him, they was real close. She loved her brother. No need to worry, Mr. Gunman. I ain't seen Tracy in over a year. Just the nine. Animals. Both restless. Didn't I tell you? There's his horse. He's still in there. For Billie Jean, boys, what's right is right. Ain't that what the good book says? some for Tracy. sooner before you went to see her. Tracy Blake's her son. They did a fine job on you, Corey. Did they leave you any teeth? I don't feel sorry for you. It's what you wanted, ain't it? You dumb mule. Make you feel any better? Say you weren't worn. How long's he got to live? Very funny. You'll do all right. Providing he leaves this area. Seems like I heard that before. You seem like a pretty bright young fellow. What made you expect anything different the way people feel about Billy Jane in this town? Nobody could be that good. Not down here, anyway. Now, that's where you are wrong, fella. All we try to do down here is live a good, clean, Christian life. Amen. Billie Jean was that kind of a girl. Of course, I didn't know her too well myself, but the doc here, he can tell you about her. Everybody in this town knew Billie Jean. Everybody. Matter of fact, between the two of us, it got to the point where people used to shy away from her once they saw her coming. Oh, Billie Jean? No. Mrs. Blake, her mother. It wasn't that her pride was considered sinful or anything like that, but. Well, you know, people had their own kids to be proud of, and they could hardly get a word in edgewise. You know, the truth of the matter is that people in this town didn't see Billie Jean more than twice in their life. Yet they knew her as well as they knew their own kids, thanks to her ma. You know, I think you got the right idea. You mean about Tracy Blake? Yeah, I know he doubled back. And if it's true that him and his sister were that close, he'd come to the funeral. Price on his head or not. I don't see how we can just go right in there and take Tracy, knowing how his sister died. You need a reason? 
Dead boy was killed three times. Now ask yourself, is he going to stop there? Where are you going? I'll meet you at the cemetery. You're the only one that can help me. It ought to be clear to you by now how I feel. I have to know about Billy Jean. Ask anyone in town. That's just what I did do. And you know what they told me? Nothing. Mrs. Blake, everybody has this idea of an angel. But when you start to press them about her, all they can talk about is you. Well, she was my daughter, wasn't she? And I was proud of her. You mean in all her 19 years, she never did anything wrong? No one said that. What was she doing up in those rocks? Why did she wear boys' clothes? She and her brother was close. I told you they was close. Close to a thief and a murderer? Her brother! Now, I don't know what you're trying to do, except maybe to make her out of something bad, to ease your conscience. Well, she wasn't bad. She was the best, most loving daughter a woman could have. All those other women in the town, but their children. I could see in their faces as I passed how they envied me, my Billie Jean. She used to bring me pretty things. Like... Like this ribbon for my dress. Look at it. She loved me. Why, well, that child wouldn't let me do a lick of work since she was 12 years old. That's how much she loved me. Mrs. Blake. Were you born with these calluses on your hands? You get out of here. I want you out of my house now. Now, why are you lying to me? Get out. Why are you lying? What are you trying to hide? Nothing. Now, get out. Now, what was Billie Jean really like? Now, that's it, isn't it? Isn't that what you're trying to hide? What was she really like? She was... But, but she was... Was what? Bad? Was she bad? Yes! She was evil. Tracy, only worse. She was the worst thing that ever happened in my life. Now will you go? You're satisfied now. Feel better knowing you didn't kill the innocence everybody thinks she was? Why? It started with this ribbon. It was just a little lie. I heard Doc Garrett's wife bragging about her daughter. And I had me this ribbon and I told him all Billy Jean give it to me. I, I couldn't stand hearing them talk about their children, their husbands. My husband was hanged, Mr. Gunman. He stole horses. And Tracy. I kicked him out once. Told him never to come back. Because I figured to protect Billie Jean. I didn't know then Billie Jean was the one taught him how to shoot. Well, he'd come back and those times she'd ride with him and his friends. Dressed like a boy. And then she used to tell me what they'd done. Laughing away till I till I'd have to put my hands over my ears and run from the house. What about all the others? I mean, the, the people in town, they must have seen something, they must have heard something about her. The only thing she ever did for me was the times she'd go into town and she'd play act to be the daughter I told them all she was. Well, I guess that's something, isn't it? I mean, that's one thing you can mark up good about it. I even paid for that, when the Reverend fell in love with her. She told me what she was going to do to him, if they ever got married. How she was going to tell him the truth in the middle of church on a Sunday morning. Well, that's the Billie Jean you killed, Mr. Gunman. And you also killed the little girl I made up. The one I loved. I wish you're in hell for that. Well, if it's any comfort to you, Mrs. Blake, knowing that the girl I killed wasn't a saint. 
That doesn't make it any better for me. It's funny. Somehow I thought it would. What are you doing here? Want to kill Billy Jean? I thought I told you to stay away and never come back. It's over. Won't be long now. If you're right. I didn't expect him to show with the whole town here. What if it's not alone? That's my lookout, not yawn. I can't trust you, Corey. We decided that. Not with a gun, anyway. You just keep out the way. I don't have to worry about you, too. Beautiful service, Mr. Reverend. That was a fine send-off, Reverend. Sheriff, you haven't seen that man, have you? That gunman. Why, no one's seen him since early this morning. You've seen the last of him. They're leaving. Came back with a price on your head. Get away from her, you old drunk. You ain't even good enough to be her doormat. Tracy! Hold it, boys. You know, I can't figure out how you two live so long. Hey, Trace. Look what I found. That's nice going, Clay. Blake! she was good or bad. You know, there's an irony in this thing that I just can't figure out. Here she was, a girl with a whole life in front of her. Now she's dead because of me. And an old drunken sock with his life behind him, he's alive because of me. It all evens out. Something you're gonna have to live with for a while. Maybe someday you'll figure out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's got it left. 
A fantasy, child. It's a dream, ain't it? We all got dreams. Let's ride. Thank you.